Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl, Beatrice, also Hi. my daughter-in-law, and yeah. also my fur baby daughter, Oh my God, Sunshine. she right down there. She's Big having side. a great time. We're having a girl party. Girl party. We are gathered here today to talk The Valley. Yes. On Bravo, which oh we just did our episode on Vanderpump Rules. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that episode, we both agreed The Valley is where it's at. It's lit. It is way fucking better yeah. than Vanderpump Rules. Totes. And I'm living for it. And Me too. I wonder what's wrong with me because it's really fucking toxic. <laughs> and Jesse is a Cro Magnon Neanderthal troglodyte. Oh my which god. Which I think are three types of cavemen, but he's all cavemen. He's all of it. Yeah. All in one man. Yeah. But like it's so toxic. But that's the reality TV that I want. Me too. I want Bad Girls Club, bitch. Yeah. Oh my I god. I want Tyra. Yes. I want her screaming at these poor young women, shaking yes. in their shoes. Get skinny. <laughs> Be pretty. Let me file your teeth down. That's the reality TV that I want, honey. <laughs> me too. And the Valley is giving me a little bit of that. Oh, one hundred percent. Enjoying it. It's lit. I texted you when I watched this yesterday. I was like, "Bitch, <laughs> things are popping off. This is lit." And you're like, "I haven't watched it yet." Oh my god. I'm like, "You're gonna watch it, and you're gonna love it." Yeah, I was. I was really flabbergasted mm. by some of the things that happened, and yeah. very entertained. Before we get into our full-blown recap, we have to remind you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. We are a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words, a lot of them. We have dumb opinions, and we freely share them. So if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby. But if you're ready to get down and party and talk the valley... Welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are ready to get down and partay, go follow us on the Instagram at Reality TV Cringe, and join us on Patreon, patreoncom cringe. We've got so much shit up on there. If you think we're crazy here, we're way more crazy over there. A hundred percent. Also, if you want to call us and leave us a voice message and give us your opinions, your thoughts, your commentary on any of the show, the shows that we are covering, all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe, one word, yeah. and leave us a message. I think you have up to 90 seconds. We may or may not play it on the pod yeah. or in the video. Probably like, We love hearing from you. We do. Last but not least, if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to like and comment comment and share and subscribe everything you do helps us to grow in the algorithm and that means we grow in the dumpster we get fatter yeah and that's what we want that's so thank you in advance we're trying to go see doctor now over here yeah <laughs> it's in houston it's not that far away we should totally do a road trip we totally should we probably have raccoons in houston that we could do like a meetup oh at God. some buffet <laughs> we could pig out and then waddle our way over to his strip mall bariatric center we could well you could weigh yourself <laughs> no but we totally could do our own little meetup and maybe at like the holiday inn like the slayton sisters did <gasps> oh in god. season one <laughs> that would be great have like a little card yeah table. yo That'd my be god great. brilliant i know coming soon <laughs> to a holiday inn express near you <laughs> Now, before we get into the valley, there were a couple of items, newsworthy, if you will, yeah. about some of the cast members that mm -hmm. we wanted to go over. First and foremost, and we did talk about this on VPR, mm -hmm. but Brittany Cartwright has apparently unfollowed Jax Taylor on Instagram, which I guess Scandal. is very important. It means something. Yeah, well, because they're separated. Right. But I mean, they were separated and still following each other. But she unfollowed Jax and she also unfollowed her PR person who uh -huh. is, guess what, a woman. Uh -huh. And guess what, just been on a trip somewhere. Was it Canada? Where'd they go? Mm -hmm. With Jax Taylor. And there's pictures of her cuddled up with Jax Taylor. And rumors are abounding that they're fucking girl. Oh, you know they're fucking. They're fucking. Such a different. You know party. they're fucking. <laughs> and so those rumors got back to Britney, and there must be some veracity to them because, boop, she unfollowed them, hose them bitches. Yeah, I believe it, man. <laughs> you know, I saw those pictures of him, Jax, and the PR. Yeah. And he's like literally face touching her uh -huh. face, and he's like all snuggly. He's got the sex eyes. I'm Yuck. like, oh, y'all are gross. Fuck. 
Yeah. Yeah. So nasty. Sorry, Brittany, but you married an absolute lout. I mean, you get what you settle for. Yeah, that's true, too. Now, the other newsworthy item concerns Michelle Lally, who yeah. is emerging as the true villain of the valley. She uh-huh. is the wife of Jesse Lally, who is that fucking peacock fop of an asshole. Fucking loser. Who pretty much assaulted Brittany uh-huh. in the hallway. We're going to get there. Yeah. But like they are in a terrible marriage as we're seeing mm-hmm. on the show and apparently michelle has already left him mm-hmm. real time year of our lord 2024 yep already left him and she has a new man already this is him we're gonna put up a picture yeah. of both michelle and the man yeah but she has moved on from that fuck wit what do you think um i love it that's great although michelle's hella toxic i hate her i hate her a lot <sighs> but like so i'm much. glad that you have another man and then she also slams like the cheating rumors and stuff. She's like, I'm not a cheater. Kristen doesn't know what she's talking about. She's crazy. I personally believe she's a cheating asshole. I believe Kristen. Show of hands. How many of us believe? We all believe Kristen. I believe Kristen. Michelle, nobody believes you. Janet from another planet. Nobody believes you. Did you see Janet on Watch What Happens Live? No. Yeah, so they were doing polls. Andy does polls. Like, you go up and you register your vote on different things. And he was asking a bunch of questions about, like, do we believe Kristen? Do we believe Michelle? And everybody in the audience in those polls was on Kristen's side. And you could kind of see Janet's face. She's like, (laughs) Janet, you bitch. Janet, you gossiping ass. Sorry, Janet. We can see right through you. And we can definitely see through that. Oh, yeah. Michelle Lally. (laughs) And Jasmine, I don't know what you're trying to do out in these streets, just making trouble. Just trying to be relevant. Throwing Kristen under the bus, calling her a liar. Show me the lie. Yes, Kristen did misspeak. Sure. She threw in racist, and that is incendiary, Yeah, and we don't want to be doing that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, she's dumb. Yeah. And then tonight, she also misspoke. She totally. didn't get it right. But, like, she's not lying. No. She is hearing stuff. Yeah. And things were said by Janet, Jasmine, and Zach. Yeah. But why we are trying to crucify Kristen... I don't know. As opposed to going to the source of the person who said it in the first place, and then verified it on camera in an interstitial... Janet. Uh-huh. I don't understand. I think all these people want to be relevant and they want to be famous and they know Kristen's history from VPR and that she got fired for being a racist and all this shit. And so they think that they can just bully her the whole entire season to make themselves look good. But all y'all just look dumb, especially you, Zach, with your freaking hair, dude. I don't know about Zach. Like, the jury is out because I kind of like him. Like, I like his shady he's moments. Funny. There are things about him that are funny. And I do think that he's going to end up riding for Kristen. But, like, he's not really showing up for her in the way that he should be mm. right now. But, like, the thing that kills me, Beatrice, is that it's Kristen and Jax that assembled this friend group and brought their friends on so that they could get famous. Mm-hmm. Yep. They could make money. They could get clout. And within two episodes, they're throwing Kristen under the bus. When I know. She's the one that gave you this opportunity. Like, hello, all of y'all are nobodies. Like, nobody Literal. knew your names. It took me four episodes to even put the names together for all these people. I'm like, I don't care about none not of y'all. Not memorable people. None of, no, not at all. And now they're throwing her under the bus. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to come for Jax, but I mean, rightfully so. Well, why aren't they coming for Jax, though? Because, like, Jax is out here 100% stirring the pot. Yeah. He's going to lunch with Jasmine, which is a lunch I don't think he would ever do otherwise unless there were cameras there. Mm -hmm. He is on purpose planting a rumor because he knows Jasmine's going to take that bone back to Janet or Zach or somebody else. So why aren't they calling out Jax and focusing instead on Kristen only. I don't know. Maybe they will with the ultimate demise of him and Brittany's uh, marriage that I'm sure we're going to see. At some point. I hope. I really hope. Please, bravo gods. What episode <gasps> are we see. on this time? Six? Yeah. Okay, because I think we have 12 episodes of this. Oh, my God. So we God. have six more episodes. I think we're going to start to get into the demise of the Brittany Jacks marriage. I hope. But I'm just really wondering why... They're not going after him. Is it because they sniff vulnerability in Kristen? Maybe she's trying to get pregnant. Like she's going through something. Maybe she's not mentally there 100% because she just got out of another relationship that was bad. And she's in this new one. So they smell blood in the water and they just want to take her down. But it's just so evil. Well, does Jax have the power? Like if he kind of created this show a little bit, does he have the power to tell people like you can't come after me? No. Because I'm the man? No. Okay, well, then I don't know. 
He does not. Maybe they're scared of him. Maybe. But I'm like, why would you be scared of him? I think they think Kristen's an easy target. But the thing is, I mean, Kristen will come back at you. Like, we've seen the totally. montage of her telling people to suck a dick and not yeah. giving a fuck. But I just, I felt bad for her. Me too. She was just trying to leave. And we're going to get there. But like, she's trying to be like the mature person uh -huh. and get out of a toxic situation. And they're coming for her. The production won't let her leave. Mm -hmm. Jesse fucking follows her. Yep. And it's just wild it's absolutely insane but honey i'm jumping ahead you are so let's start at the beginning get us started yeah so we started with Kristen and luke in their apartment they're talking about how she was sick i guess with covid and luke's like i thought you were pregnant mm -hmm. <laughs> like no she's not she gets into her pregnancy stuff and she really wants a baby nobody cares yeah we know <laughs> that's and, been established yeah and then they're talking about how they kind of need a place of their own. He needs a place of his own. He doesn't feel at home in her apartment and he hates LA. And I mean, I do too. Fuck LA. I think LA is nice. I mean, I'm not going to no. be shitting on LA every no, episode, LA. Beatrice. Jesus Christ. Fuck LA. He's talking about Colorado. He wants to go to Colorado. I love Colorado personally. You do love Colorado. Yes, I, do. Yeah. I went there for the first time in September. I thought it was beautiful. I could totally understand why everybody wants to move there. Yeah, and everybody is. So that's <sighs> Unfortunately. why I'm never going to live there again. Yeah. And Kristen talks about how she doesn't want to live in Colorado because at the ranch that they're in, they have to bring in water. So I wonder where they're at in colorado like grand junction yeah i don't know like I'd some be very shitty... curious to know where the ranch is but yeah. does he mean like he's just doing the hookups like cody brown like getting the electric and the septic i don't know and the internet out to his property or do you actually like to have like you have to get water brought in monthly i'm thinking it's like kind of like an off-grid type fill thing. your water tank that's the problem with colorado right there yeah and honestly it's the problem with california is you don't have like a water resource yeah and you can't even collect your own rainwater which yeah, is it's freaking against the stupid law. god damn it damn now you're making me mad i <laughs> know <laughs> but she's talking about how she doesn't want to live in colorado because of that but she loves it there and so i don't know i hope it's not like the end of their relationship because of this because i think luke's actually really good to her i think he likes her a lot yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I think so. I mean, he's been on her podcast, I want to say, for a couple of years now. Really? Yeah, like he's her co-host. Oh. Like he's fully embedded in her LA lifestyle. Ew. So like for as much as he's talking about how fishing is everything he wants to do ever, he's also availing himself of the multiple opportunities that Los Angeles mm. has to offer. And See, Kristen. you've got a refined nose for that. You That's can right. sniff out the shit. Yes, I do. I'm a raccoon. Yeah, you nice can. Nice to meet you. <laughs> And then we have Jack's going to have lunch with Jasmine okay. at some bar. This was hella fake. Do we think this is a real friendship? No, not at all. I don't all. think Jasmine would ever want to spend any time with Jack's Taylor mm -hmm. authentically and vice versa. No, they're just there to gossip. Mm -hmm. They immediately get into Brittany and Jax's sex life. Why? Uh, because she brings it up. She's like, the girls all know that you ain't fucking her. And Jack says How something weird. Embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Well, he said it's hella embarrassing. But he says something weird. He's like, "Yeah, I know Brittany's love language is my head between her legs." Uh, I don't need to. I don't want that visual. That. Number one. I don't need to know that. I know. And number two, I'm why like, if you, you know that, that, then why are you fucking her? Why yeah. aren't you eating her box? Put your head between her legs if Hello? that's all she wants. I don't understand. Because he don't want to, Beatrice. He don't want no part of that. He keeps saying, it's like, I'm just stressed. I got a lot going on. Like, it's just the last thing on my mind. I'm like, mm, I doubt that. Do you? I don't know. I don't, you think he's just so busy and like, he I think he's stressed. I think when we get to the part where him and Brittany are talking at the bar, I think thought i felt some semblance of humanity from him talking mm. about how stressed out he is i thought he was authentically close to tears mm. and i thought britney was completely callous and unfeeling in that moment <laughs> we will get there though we will get there but yeah like it sounds like it's a quick fix all you have to do is give your wife some cunnilingus and <laughs> let her know that she's pretty <laughs> yeah. and you can mend your marriage but he doesn't want to do that no he doesn't at all because i don't think he's attracted to her mm -hmm. no more and then they start talking about michelle and jesse and this is where Jack says he's heard that Michelle's been texting other men. Right. Which I'm like... Kristen told me. Yeah. I hope Kristen doesn't say anything. Just like I'm saying something on camera to you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, whatever. Everybody's blabbing it. I right. love that, honestly, for Jesse yeah. and Michelle. <laughs> I'm like, too. that's what you get, dude. Yeah, they're, they're terrible trash people. Horrible, horrible, awful people. And then we have Jack's calling Danny about um throwing a, a hair loss. person's party 
Got a bald spot. <laughs> Just another way for Jax Throwing to try and get his bag. Need a check. Dude, he's not balding at all. He's plucking some hair out <laughs> from the back of his head <laughs> to pretend that he has a bald spot yeah. so he can cash a check because they think he's very worried about money. I wonder if they're hurting for money, like really bad. I don't I think he's looking at his future and wondering like how he can create and maintain income. Mm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're like, they've got some debt. Probably. A bankruptcy or something. I don't know, man. Probably probably something. I would love to know. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Michelle and her baby Isabella at some play park okay. or whatever. And this is where she talks about her marriage again. She's like, right. I want Isabella to not see two parents fighting and right. bickering, which I'm like, yeah, that's fair. Creating the pretense that she's unhappy and then she wants a healthy relationship because she's already fucking somebody else. This is all just a ruse. Yep. So that we are thinking that you're worried about your actual marriage when you're already stepping outside of your marriage and fucking some other guy, a director or somebody else. Right. And I'm like, why don't you just be honest about it? Like, I would respect you. We always say this. Let's just fucking because tell Because she truth. knows that Jesse will become extremely punitive, which he said in the last episode, if I ever find out that she does that to me game over Mm. and i will be telling isabel that it's your mama who wrecked everything for the next 40 years of my life so she knows he's gonna go scorched earth if he finds out that she's cheated and so that's why she's trying to pretend it's about the fact that they're arguing no it's it's about you're fucking somebody else and you're not really working on your marriage oh yeah do you want to no and i mean i don't want you to work on your marriage with him anyway because he sucks but she sucks too oh totally i hate her i know after this episode i'm like you're a bitch Mm -hmm. and so then we have um the next scene jason and jesse are going over to danny and nia's house because they're gonna like move around furniture and none of these guys are handy at all it's kind of embarrassing i'm shocked like you don't even have fundamental man skills they can't even work a drill (laughs) i'm like what the fuck (laughs) like let nia do it then jesus crackers jeez louise and like i'm a lesbian i'm handy i'm always fixing shit around my place but i can't build furniture so i mean that's fair your daughter does it i make her do it she's the ikea lesbian i'm the handyman lesbian (laughs) you're the um lesbian who's making stock you're canning you're making your own butter things of that nature exactly yeah but these men are worthless (laughs) even jason i know who i love jason he's the lawyer how come you can't use a screwdriver how come you how come you can't like disassemble this bed i don't I get it it's not that hard i'm fucking spoiled with my husband you are i was thinking about him i'm my like husband. damn if these men uh-huh. were around a real man oh my god like your husband Shame. Oh my Shame. God. they'd shrivel up my husband will carry a car engine my husband will build a car engine yes. my husband will rehab a home he mm-hmm. will build a kitchen he will replace the toilet my husband's a man at it. <laughs> these men are not men i know well danny Danny's more of a man in terms kind of, like, of. the emotionality and stuff. But even yeah, that, yeah, yeah. he can't build nothing. I know. You got to build something. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And fucking Jesse's They're doing stupid nothing. ass. Yeah. yeah. Jesse's stupid ass He's, with his He wine. brought the champagne. He brought I the bubbly. With his fucking wine glass. I literally hate this man so much. At 11 a.m. Oh, my God. Yeah. Here's the champagne. Oh, man things. I can't. Man duties. And in his yeah. talking head, he's like, if you need advice on wine or champagne or fashion or anything, yeah, I'm your guy. I'm like, you're a loser. And nobody wants that from you. No. Your fashion sucks. <laughs> Can you see your hair? Do you see your jackets that you don't offer to your wife when she's cold? And your fucking bow ties. Second episode in a row. Yeah. You loser. Dork. <laughs> Lala in the after show said he has short man syndrome. Did totally. you see that? Totally. I did see I that. I can't wait for him to see that. She I said can't that. wait. He's going to get so bad. Oh, he's going to be fuming. Yeah. Totally. But while they're building furniture, not really building furniture, not really doing anything manly, they're talking about like Jesse and therapy mm-hmm. and all of that. And this is when he's like, yeah, I'm meeting with like a plant medicine doctor and I'm going to do some psilocybin and ayahuasca because I really want to like, you know, see my ego from the outside. I'm ego like, death. Shut the fuck up. Heroic dose. I can't I'm just stand. saying words about enlightenment. Oh, my God. <laughs> Go to an actual therapist. For real. Dude. Yeah, like, I think you are a diagnosable narcissist. Mm-hmm. I think you're fucking malignant and toxic and you're going to damage your daughter. Like, try to be an actual better person. I mean, ayahuasca and psilocybin, I'm 100% for it. Same. 
a hundred percent for it and i've done a little bit of it myself for neat yep but that is not where you need to start well and go like, to an actual therapist not a life coach right and i'm like if you're not in the right mindset you're gonna have like a crazy fucking trip and i mean you kind of deserve it you kind of deserve something crazy yeah. to wake yourself out of this narcissistic toxic mm-hmm. bullshit that you're in but you're not gonna actually grow like he's not yeah. gonna have an ego death where he actually becomes profound probably not no Mm -mm. he just wants to go to capri of course i'm gonna capri and feel better about everything fucking loser and he's loathsome even the guys are like um you're gonna do ayahuasca and psilocybin like you're not gonna learn shit i would just find an actual therapist who can help you and give you some tools and some diagnostics that might allow you to get to the next phase in your relationship which is going to be divorce by the way 100 percent. help you to consciously uncouple yeah nobody (laughs) wants to be with you you (laughs) asshole you're gonna be alone forever i hate him so much (laughs) me too i hate him so much And then we have Jax and Brittany going to the bar. Yeah. Because Brittany wants to be involved. But why? You haven't made any investment. So I'm trying to suss this out because right? they're trying to pretend that they really need Brittany's design input. And I'm thinking to myself, as a woman, when was the last time Brittany emerged on the scene as some sort of an interior designer? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but she wants to be involved. And so Jax is bringing her and it was all very strange. They drive over in like a golf cart. Is that legal? I don't know. Does does that mean he had a DUI and he can't drive a real car? (laughs) I don't know. I think if you're on the main road, you have to have it licensed or registered or something like that. So I don't think it's DUI. I just think it's weird. It's very weird. But they're like kind of talking about the bar and stuff and she wants to be involved. And then they're at the bar and she's giving her fake input to the construction people yeah i think it needs to be brighter okay. yeah i think I'm, this needs to be upholstered okay that's it and then they go and sit thanks, down thanks brit <laughs> i don't like your so for your input lame they go sit down and talk about their marriage and shit and this is where she brings up like you ain't fucking me enough and you don't make me feel pretty or sexy i just need more romance <laughs> <laughs> yuck 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 <laughs> Kind of. That's pretty much what it is. Pretty and much. This is kind of where we get that snapshot of Jax and he's like, well, I'm just really going through it. We're trying to open up this bar and we've got the house and we've got crews and there's just so much on my plate right now. Like I'm really, really feeling stressed out and anxious to which Brittany says, right, but we're going to start for the new baby next month, right? Yeah, so we're going to As if more. everything he said just went right over her head and or she doesn't care. She just wants what she wants. And so when he, when she says that, like, but we're still going to try next month, right? That's when he's like, I feel like I'm going to cry. Yeah. Because you're not listening to me because I'm trying to share with you that I'm breaking down for whatever reason, whether it's finances, love, we don't know. But like, I'm fucking breaking down and all you're pushing is your agenda about having another kid, which by the way, we do not need to bring into this marriage because we're broken down. Yeah. And we're broke, probably. Yeah. Broke <laughs> and broken down. Yeah. I felt like his concerns were genuine, like he is stressed and everything. But I also kind of got like a feeling of like, I wonder if he says that all the time, like as an excuse to like never fuck. Like anytime she's like, yeah, like you want to, uh, you want to eat my box? You want to, I can give you a blowjob or something. He's like, no, I'm tired. I'm stressed. You know what I mean? So I just wonder if maybe that's why she was kind of cold and callous to it because Mm -hmm. she's like, I don't care. You say this all the time. And maybe this is performative, like, because this is Jax Taylor kind of, you know, producing a moment. I don't know. Okay, but like, what is Brittany doing to foster intimacy in her relationship? Like, are we really putting it all on the emotionally unintelligent Jax Taylor to figure out how to grow intimacy in your relationship? Like, how are you nurturing that relationship, Brittany? Like, where is your partnership ownership in that exchange? I'm not hearing enough from you about that other than you want tequila shots all the time and you drunk. Uh Uh-huh. Because at the freaking hair party, she's Uh already drinking. And then at the dinner, she's drinking. I'm like, girl. Yeah, calm down. Chill. You don't need to be drunk all the time. So yeah, that was kind of an interesting moment and insight into their um, fucked up marriage. And then we have Jax's hair loss party. (laughs) Congrats on your hair loss. I think that's the name of this episode, (laughs) right? Janet says that, I think. That was pretty funny. funny. (laughs) Yeah, so... That was an interesting party. What is what stands out about that? First and foremost, uh, the Burning Man lady. Yes. Who's selling Burning Man garb. And her pussy, probably. That you can... <laughs> 
where to Burning Man, which nobody's going to. No. But now all of a sudden, Jesse is really, really interested in going to Burning Man and very interested in this young lady who is dressed very scantily. Mm-hmm. But like she has agency over her body and she can do sure. what she wants. That's fine. But like Jax and Jesse are all kind of just hovering around her, like pretending weirdos. they're interested in the clothes and talking about Burning Man, but they're really just pervy a-holes well and i thought that was so fucked up of jesse to be like so into this girl like he's talking to her a lot at least Jax at some point is like i gotta leave i gotta Mm -hmm. be out of here because i'm staring at this chick yeah too long and that's (laughs) that's like the bar is like really low right the bar is in hell yeah but jesse is just like a barnacle to this girl until Michelle comes up at some point. No, he he actually leaves and then he comes back. He does. He sneaks back to the Burning Man. Lady. Yeah, I'm like, what are like you he doing? brings back the clothes or whatever and like starts talking to her again, and that's when Michelle walks up on him. But before he goes back to Burning Man, lady, he's out dancing with I think Britney's glamour. Yeah, and Michelle is on like the periphery watching him dance, and she's like, you can have him. I know. You can have him. I'm like, you're such a bitch. Michelle, this is inappropriate to say at a party about your husband who's just having a good time. Yep. And then when he's talking to the Burning Man lady and flirting, you come over and act all possessive, even though we know you're cheating on him. You're fucking somebody else. Yeah. I just uh, thought that was weird. Are you going to Burning Man? Which is the right question to ask. And Jesse's like, no, (laughs) maybe. I mean, I could if I want to. No, you can't, you 40 old loser. You're not going to Burning Man. No, you're not. And then we have Zach also criticizing Jack's hair, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> Not Jack's hair, Schwartz's hair. Was it Schwartz? It was Schwartz's hair because remember Schwartz comes in with his bleached blonde oh, hair. Yeah, he was there. And Zach has an interstitial when he's making fun of <laughs> Schwartz's hair. And yeah. I'm like, I can't believe that <laughs> you have the audacity to sit there with a straight face and call out somebody else's hair when I am unsure whether... The thing that's on your head is alive or not. <laughs> is it an actual marsupial? <laughs> is it a mammal? What's happening on top of your head? It's, it's really bad. very confusing. And you're calling out Tom Schwartz? Yeah. Okay. Embarrassing. Yes. Yeah. I, for some reason, I thought it was him criticizing Jax's hair because everybody else does yes, talk about Jax's they hair. Do. And they're like, this dude's like barely balding. And Jax is giving his whole speech about it. Yeah, I noticed a bald spot in my garage and I spray painted my head and everybody's like, what (laughs) what are you talking about right you're not balding but like get your bag though yeah like everybody's like in support which is fine or whatever and then we have the dinner with everybody this is like the meat of the episode this was so good i can't even remember why they were doing a dinner was it after the hair loss uh, yeah it was after the party at the (laughs) skaber they go to some rando suite and they're having dinner everybody sits down immediately we see that jesse is not in a good mood which is weird though because with burning man girl he certainly seemed to be in a great mood but as soon as he's sitting there next to his wife he's um seems very unhappy yeah seems morose yeah seems mad almost oh yeah and i think he talks about it in his talking head he's like the reason why i'm so upset is because like i just got out of a therapy session where i came to the realization that michelle's gonna leave me Mm -hmm. and so i'm upset but then you're sitting next to your wife there i'm like i'm gonna drink i'm gonna have a bunch of drinks and just get out of control Jax comes over sees that michelle is in a skimpy ass dress and he's like are you cold Here's my jacket. Jax takes off his jacket. And meanwhile, Jesse's sitting next to his wife in a full ass jacket Mm -hmm. and keeps it on. Yeah. Just like he did last week when they were outside. And he's like, are you cold? And she's like, yeah. And he didn't give her his jacket. I mean, he's the worst. He's the worst. He's so bad. So Jax gives her the jacket. And she says something to Jesse like, what's going on? Like, why are you being so quiet? And he's just like, no, I'm just hanging out don't really want to talk that much and she's like okay but it's kind of weird yeah so michelle is giving jesse shit Mm -hmm. for being quiet for being shut down and then he starts to talk yeah right at some point he starts to say something about he said something about something oh he was talking about his attitude he was like, why is everybody talking about my attitude or whatever? Like, I'm fine. Like, just shut the fuck up or something. And then nobody's really, like, listening to him. I thought he brought up a specific subject and then Michelle told him to shut up. Like, as soon as he started to talk oh, about something, yeah. she's like, okay, shut up. He's like, well, you just told me I wasn't talking and now I am talking and now you're telling me to shut up. And he's getting mad. I don't rem- I don't know what's happening 
you know, there's a lot going on. Everybody's, everybody's having talking. side conversations, but at some point he fucking slams the table again. Again. And this is where Kristen across the table is like, oh, here he goes. Yeah. And it's abusive. Yep. And I don't want to be here for this. I'm not doing another night with Jesse fucking Lally asking like an acting like a Napoleonic asshole. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here for that. Yeah. And other people can hear Kristen getting upset. I think Jasmine immediately takes issue with Kristen using the word abuse. So does she Janet. Ha- yeah. So does Janet. They- and I think Jasmine has a-, a talking head or an interstitial where she's like, okay, calm down, Kristen. Yeah. She's like, oh, Kristen has like a bingo card right. for like these buzzwords. Racist. Abusive. And abusive. And I'm like, yeah. wow. I'm like, you guys suck. So much for women supporting women. Oh, for sure. And yeah. I'm like, why are we acting like Jesse isn't abusive? Like we've seen this whole entire season. He's an asshole. Yeah, I don't understand why That's they so would wild. side with him. Doesn't make any sense. I'm like, not a good look for y'all. Janet no. and Jasmine and Michelle defending her piece of shit husband who's fucking aggressive at the right. table it's unnecessary so then Kristen gets up to leave because she's like i want to go she well, tells actually, luke actually isn't it i think jesse who asks Kristen, like what's your problem like Something jesse like brings it up to Kristen. she's just trying to get up and go yeah she's not trying to make a big issue out of it she doesn't want to have a big fucking fight she's just like i want to bounce this is like bad energy let me out of here yeah and um he's like what's your problem and then they start popping off yeah because she goes to leave he follows her we don't get to see it like the producers aren't filming it we just hear it they're in the hallway she's trying to leave a producer is telling her she shouldn't yeah like we should get you back into the room you should sit back down like you should film this scene and she's like i don't want to this guy is an abusive asshole why would i want to be in that situation and this is when jesse gets up because he's mad at michelle who's told him to shut up right so he's like fine i'm just gonna walk out so he walks out into the hallway i don't think he follows Kristen necessarily to confront Kristen, but he finds himself in the hallway with Kristen, who's talking to the producer and they start fighting and this is where we hear on the hot mic jesse say something like if you're going to reveal some skeleton in my closet that i don't know about right now i will bury you i will fucking bury you and then they start to argue and voices start to raise things yep. start to escalate and when luke hears it he immediately we love that about like a luke. real man like a real man he pops up and he goes out into the hallway and this is where we have the hallway confrontation which is insane so many things going on so many things because jesse is getting in luke's fucking face and is like saying shit like you need to control your woman well, at first he's like what are you gonna do because luke comes in and he's like pushing him back not harsh mm-hmm. not like trying to choose them off and start a fight but like man back up off my girl chill yeah and this is when we've got little ass jesse what is he five fucking seven <laughs> i know like what are you gonna do luke and trying to buck up on jesse uh, on on luke and i'm yeah. like yeah Calm down. Chill out, man. He's drunk, though. Oh, totally drunk. And then Michelle's yelling at fucking Kristen, mm-hmm. and they're yelling. Like, Kristen's like, I'm just trying to be your friend. But I'm right. like, you're not. I mean, you're kind of threatening to, like, reveal the secrets and stuff that you know. I'm like, it, it's not what I would want do. to as well, though. If you're going to sit here and let your husband scream at me when I'm just trying to leave this fucking fuck ass shit ass party i know you know your husband's out here screaming at me and being abusive toward me like why what did i really do and michelle's like defending Mm jesse it's super fucking weird because Kristen's like saying he's abusive he's a piece of shit i hate him Mm -hmm. you need to fucking leave him basically is what she's saying and michelle is like shut the fuck up Kristen!" like getting in her fucking face Mm -hmm. her nipple pops out Mm -hmm. i'm just like oh my god this is insane and then at some point like things pop off hardcore i can't remember what happened luke to- says something like take care of your wife or take care of your own marriage yes that's right and then jesse comes charging back down the hallway pushes zach to the side barrels over Brittany. yeah and i don't know what he's trying to do is he trying he's to he's trying to fight fight luke yeah which i don't believe he's going to win that no. battle with that colorado boy or are yeah. you trying to put your hands on Kristen, because honestly, the energy that he's giving is wife beater. Oh, yeah. The energy that he's giving is DV. Yep. So like, are you going to put your fucking hands on her? Because I think Luke actually says that. He's like, what are you going to do? 
put your hands on Kristen? Yes. That ain't, that ain't ever going to happen with me here. No, like, sir. Jesse, you are showing the fuck out. I know. Crazy. Insane. And after he pushes Zach and Brittany and everything, Zach gets up and is like trying to push Jesse mm-hmm. away from Luke. Like it's like so chaotic. And he's like, you need to fucking stop, dude. And finally, a producer steps in yep. and stops Jesse as well. Here's my question, Beatrice. Mm. Where's Jax? No, I know. He's just in the back watching. Where's Jax? He's not Your doing shit. Your wife is right there in the middle of the melee. I mean, I'm going to assume that you see her getting barreled over by Jesse. Uh-huh. And you're not going to have your cardigan moment like from season three or whatever in the parking lot in Vegas where fucking Jax takes off his sweater. He takes off his fucking shirt and he bows up with somebody oh like you're gosh. not going to do that for Britney. No, you're just going to stand in the background and let this all go down wild because it's good TV. He's like, I'm getting wild. paid. I don't care. That's your wife. I know the mother of your child. Luke and you're is not doing gonna... the right thing. Yes. I love that Luke, every time somebody mm-hmm. comes after Kristen, he tries to defend her. Mm-hmm. Like, I really do love that about him. But yeah, Jax is literally, he comes into the hallway to look at what's going on. And then he walks back. Right. <laughs> he goes back to the table and he's like, whatever. Well, no, trust and believe he's probably just walking back, but still watching. Yeah. I have every confidence that he saw his wife get pushed over. He didn't care. He did not care. I'm just like, and we have to revisit the issue that we have talked about before, which is like, Jesse, what are you doing with regard to your reputation? Right. You have a whole ass real estate business yep. that I guess you're trying to have us believe is lucrative and that you're very successful and you go to Capri once or twice a year. Like, are you really trying to put yourself out on the national stage looking like an animal who wants to put hands on women? I think he thinks he's justified because I think he's like Kristen. He's of the belief that Kristen's lying and spreading a bunch of rumors and it's all just a bunch of bullshit. And she's the one that's trying to damage their reputation. Like, I think this guy does not have any self-awareness. Same thing with Michelle. And they don't see how they're coming off. I think everybody hates them at this point. I hate them. Uh, Oh, everyone in America? Yeah. Or at the table? I think everyone at the table for whatever reason are are siding with them oh yeah no Mm -hmm. everybody in the friend group besides Kristen and luke who seem to be the only sane people here Mm -hmm. think that jesse and michelle are in the right and i don't get that i really don't get that it's again i think they're making Kristen the scapegoat because they think that that's gonna look good for all of them and Kristen doesn't do herself any favors because in the hallway um she's telling michelle like your husband is talking mad shit about you on camera every week And Michelle's like, well, what is my husband saying? Tell me what he's saying. And she says, well, your husband told the guys that he's going to divorce you within two months, which, of course, is something that Luke heard. Well, a version of this is what Luke heard, because when all of the guys were together at Jax's house in the pool, Jesse said something like, I don't think my marriage is going to make it another two months. Yeah. He never said he was going to divorce Michelle within two months. No. So Kristen heard something from Luke and twisted it maybe didn't understand it or was in the heat of the moment. She didn't express it the right way. And so she says that to Michelle. Jesse immediately says, I never said that. And this makes it even worse. Yep. And then Jackson is talking head is like, no, yeah, that never happened. It's actually the other way around. It's Mm -hmm. Michelle who's going to leave Jesse in two months. And I'm like, damn. Right. And then Michelle gets even madder because Jesse's like, that is not what I said at all. Mm -hmm. And says to Kristen like well what are you supposed to be protecting me from like you right. keep mentioning protection you keep threatening me what is it and Kristen's like do you really want to know do you really want to know and then we get the final interstitial of Kristen sitting on the couch saying that basically Michelle Lolly has been seeing somebody else for the last year yeah and that kind of lines up to what jesse was saying at the pool party at Jax's when he mentioned that he found out michelle was trying to get her own apartment mm-hmm. like about a year ago and leaving him and so around that time approximately michelle also started taking up with somebody else so she a cheater oh yeah and you know what she's acting like a cheater 100 percent. she's and lying i think jesse knows that she's a cheater and so i think jesse is spiraling i think he's breaking mm-hmm. down i think it's really unfortunate that he's also drinking and having this altercation in the hallway because i think his real problem is with his wife yeah 100 percent. and even Kristen on the couch when she drops that bomb she's like i'm in support of this because i think jesse's a total piece of shit mm-hmm. but like i'm protecting michelle but i'm like 
no, you're not anymore. <laughs> right. You're spilling it. Well, because Kristen, How are they? They're acting fucking like fools in the hallway. Exactly. I wouldn't be protecting you either. Yeah, and you're screaming at my face mm-hmm. when I'm. I know this secret about you, and you're acting like I'm the fucking villain here. Like fuck you, and you're defending your abusive husband. Yeah. When I was just trying to leave, I didn't want to get into this fight. I didn't want to say any of these things. I'm just trying to fucking get out of here. Seriously. And that's where we have the preview of her in the hallway taking her mic off and telling Luke, like, I did not fucking sign up for this. Like, mm-hmm. if I I wanted to be on a show like this again i'd rather be on vpr when i'm like yes right so at least we got to see that preview yes and then it was ending on a to be continued once again with michelle storming back into the dinner with everybody saying i have something to say well guess what i don't want to hear a bitch yeah fuck you nobody wants to hear what you have to say you lying hoe seriously it's just going to be some more shit about Kristen. honestly yes it is and taking sides because I saw a clip. I don't know if it was on Instagram. I can't attribute it. I'm sorry, but I saw a clip of next week's episode. Mm -hmm. We have Kristen and Luke sitting down in their apartment and Luke is telling Kristen, you got that wrong. That is not what I said, Jesse said. Oh. Like what I said was this and instead you said that and that's a real problem. Like you did that also with what you heard from Jasmine and Zach. You added the word racist and you can't continue to do that. And Kristen says, yeah, words are hard. And he's like, yeah, they are hard, but you have to do better. And he says something like, I don't think I can continue in a relationship unless you (gasps) fix this, unless you clean this up. Furthermore, he's telling Kristen, so somebody's given him a message. He's telling Kristen, these people don't want to film with you they don't want to film with you they don't want to be around because she's messy that's right i think when michelle comes back into this room into the dinner she's going to tell everybody i don't want to film with her anymore i don't want to be around her anymore and i don't think you guys should be around her either so they're gonna try and have like a line in the sand oh damn I can't wait to see that, honestly. I, I think feel that's really crazy. bad for Kristen. I Me feel too. like, Kristen, honey, you're 40, 41, whatever. Like, if you're going to say these incendiary allegations, you've got to make sure you're relaying that information truthful, truthfully and accurately. Right. Right. And or not at all. Yep. But at the same time, you are receiving information from people about the demise of a marriage and or about somebody cheating and yep. or about somebody being a fucking Republican and a anti-LGBTQIA. Yeah. So she's receiving this information. She's not lying. She's just getting it wrong a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, just don't say anything. Just let it play out the way it's going to play out because it's all going to come down on the, all of these mm-hmm. people. They're mm-hmm. all going to get their comeuppance. I wonder if it's like... She's just seeing all these fake ass people being pieces of shit, putting on a performance on this show. And she's just like, what the fuck? Like, y'all are a bunch of liars. Mm -hmm. You're a bunch of cheaters. Like, I think she wants to, like, say the truth and be authentic. But I think you're right. I think she just doesn't get it right. Yeah, I think in the heat of the moment, she misspeaks. Yes. And then it But it's not her intention to do so. She's not trying to prevaricate or to lie. Yeah, good word. You know, and to drop thank you and to drop bombs. I think she's trying to tell the truth based on like how she can say it in the moment. Like she she does have to clean that up. Yeah. Luke is right about that. And he seems disappointed in her. And he should be. And Kristen, you need to do better. Yeah. But at the same time, that doesn't negate all the fuck shit all these other people are doing. Janet, (sighs) Jasmine. For real. Janet's the fucking gossip whore of this whole group. Mm -hmm. She's spreading all this shit, I think. I think Mm -hmm. she's the queen bee. Even Jasmine, I think... I don't think it was this episode. I think it was last episode. She's like, there's only one queen of gossip in this group. And mm-hmm. it's not like me or it's not Kristen or something like that. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's it's Janet. It's Janet. Yeah. And she's watching all of this happen. And then she's spinning it like a fucking mean girl. Mm-hmm. And so. And she's loving it. Yes. And that's gross. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. But she'll get her karma. Like she'll, it'll come out. It always does. Well, it already kind of is. Exactly. Because the reception from the audience for Janet and for Michelle and for Jesse is fucking in the floor. I love it. I was up on Michelle's Instagram <gasps> comment after comment Stop. after comment. Like, you are the problem. You and your hobbit of a husband. <laughs> fucking pompadour. You're, you're the fucking problem. And nobody, I mean, comment after comment. And she's reading them because she's liking the few and far the between comments. They're like, we love you so much. You're so beautiful, Slay Queen. Like, it's only a matter of time before she starts limiting yeah, the comments. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. oh my god i love to see it i i was shocked mm-hmm. and chagrined this episode were you chagrined yeah oh wow okay <laughs> i'm like um i'm like jax taylor in vpr where he's like i'm not good with words that's yeah. me <laughs> 
I was worked up a little bit. Like, I mean, that kind of triggers ancient trauma for sure. Like, aggressive men like that, like rampaging in a hallway. I'm just like, holy fuck. Yeah. Like, I can see why Kristen would be upset and really want to get out of there because that is my first inclination as well. I'd be like, I got to go. I got to get out of here. I totally. do not want to be around for another night with Jesse pounding on this table and screaming at everybody because I'm triggered. Know. That's wild to me that he thinks that he can do that. And I think he talked about it in this episode. Like, I know I can use my aggression to like shut people up and mm -hmm. have them listen. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. Honestly, that's a guy who never got his ass beat. Totally. That's a guy who needs to get his ass beat good one time. Yep. So you can learn. In and Hawaii, we say, bum bye, you learn. Yeah. Like, you're going to learn yep. one day because you talk, you fucking run your mouth so much and you're going to run up on the wrong guy, dude. Yep. And or girl, because you little. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent. Your daughter could take him. For I know. Sure, hundred percent. With all of her kickbox yes, and stuff, she'd yes. be like, "Fuck you, dude." Asshole. He's like five seven with his hair, but yeah. like five. That's four why without. his hair is so high. <laughs> yeah. So he can say, "I'm five seven. Okay, yeah. you're five four. Yeah, you're literally five four. You're dumb, <laughs> tiny jacket. little man. Yes. Oh, but do good not episode, like though. Do not approve. Very good episode. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go, my dear? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star five. review. It really helps us grow the pod, and we want to get famous over here. Oh my gosh! So please and thank you. No, but it really does help. Like does. every single five star review really helps us to grow, and we appreciate it so very much. If you are on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment, share and subscribe. That also really really yes. helps us, and we just love you so much, we do. so very much. We love you, and we love doing what we do here on Reality TV Cringe. And so, until next time, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys